Viewers often leave comments giving me their lipid panel results, and I'm usually astonished that statins are even being discussed with them given the numbers that they've shown. Today, we're going to look at one of those instances. Stay tuned. Here's what I received in a comment from a viewer. First, they had been prescribed a statin. They hadn't been taking them yet. Their total cholesterol reading was 221 milligrams per deciliter, or about 5.7 millimoles per liter. Their LDL was 113, or 2.9 millimoles per liter. Their HDL was 94, extremely good, or again, extremely good as 2.4 millimoles per liter. Their triglycerides were 53 milligrams per deciliter, 0.6 in the other units. And looking at the panel as a whole and using an equation that a different viewer had actually commented to me, and I learned something, I always learn from the viewer comments and I thank you for them. This implies a LP little a of around 11 milligrams per deciliter. Unfortunately, I can't give it in nanomoles per liter because that's the other unit that's usually measured because the conversion is just not straightforward and it's very hard to get it accurate. These are their figures. Their triglycerides to HDL ratio was 0.56 in the milligrams per deciliter unit or 0.25 in the millimoles per liter unit. Their comment was, my ratio seems to be good, and I have to take exception to that. Their ratio isn't good, it's phenomenal. So I think they're underselling themselves by saying, oh, my ratio seems to be good. No, it's a phenomenal triglycerides to HDL ratio. This appears to be a metabolically healthy person. So I wanna be clear that I'm not giving it advice. This shouldn't be construed as advice. And if you're the viewer who happen to leave these particular numbers and you recognize yourself, this isn't advice. I just wanna make that clear because there's many things I don't know. I don't know the viewer's age. I don't even know the viewer's gender. It was a user name that really didn't indicate that. I don't know their race. I don't know their diabetes status. I don't know their smoking status. I don't know their blood pressure. It seems in these three, they're probably not issues. I doubt that the person smokes. I doubt that they have a lot of insulin resistance given these numbers. And I suspect that their blood pressure is probably good, but I don't know that for sure. I don't know their family history. They may have a family history of cardiovascular disease. And I don't know if they have any prior cardiovascular events. Reading between the lines of the comment, it seems like they probably didn't, but I don't know for sure. Given how little info I have, I decided to, to look at this another way. Suppose I had such numbers and I know my age, I know my gender, I know the history, I know blood pressure, I know my diabetes status and all that. And I plugged them into a risk calculator, the 2018 pooled cohort equation risk calculator, which is the most accurate one there. We can quibble with whether it's any good at all, risk calculators in general, but it's a starting point. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get us to a starting point if I had these numbers at my age, 66 years old, white male and all that. The Calculator told me I had a 10-year risk of a heart attack of about 4.31%. In other words, a one out of maybe 22 chance of having a heart attack over the next 10 years. Using the pharmaceutical company propaganda relative risk reductions that usually apply at these lower risks, I calculated the absolute risk reduction for me of being about 1.5%, meaning the number needed to treat, the number of people just like me that we would have to treat for 10 years in order to avoid a single cardiovascular event is 66. That means one out of the 66 people will avoid a cardiovascular event that they were going to have otherwise. Two people will still have that cardiovascular event and 63 of the people weren't gonna have a cardiovascular event in these 10 years anyway. Of course, I worry about the two people who have their cardiovascular events anyway because they're probably thinking they're protected when it turns out they're not. There's a two out of three chance approximately that you're not gonna be protected. It's the 63 people that really bothers me that that many people would have to take a medication with no apparent benefit for them for 10 years, they would have to bear the burden, they would have to bear the cost, which nowadays with insurance is probably pretty low, financial cost, but the burden of adverse effects, if they get them, and the burden of remembering to take the pill every day, and just the whole idea of now your health is in the hands of a pharmaceutical company. With the current guidelines that are actually pharmaceutical company sponsored guidelines, whether they will admit that or not, they really are sponsored, at least behind the scenes, by the pharmaceutical companies. Even those guidelines would not make me, in this situation, eligible for statin, so they wouldn't be recommended. My chronic care doctor would be ecstatic if he saw these numbers. I don't know about my primary care physician, 
physician. I know my past primary care physicians when I lived in a different area, they like most PCPs were enthralled by their pharmaceutical reps. I'm pretty sure that they might look at this and say you should be on a statin anyway with a total of 221 milligrams per deciliter. I don't see it, but that's what they would do. So I'm already on my closing thoughts. I know this was a quick one. At the time of filming, I was about to leave on a backpacking trip and I'm pressed for time. Without knowing a lot more about the viewer's situation, I can't be sure, but this smells like standard pill pushing situation. It just seems ludicrous that 113 milligrams per deciliter, 2.9 millimoles per liter, measure for LDL as the reason to put someone on statins in the absence of some other overwhelming risk factor, such as familial hypercholesterolemia, which clearly this person doesn't have, or family history combined with past cardiovascular events, which I don't believe are present in this case. My gut tells me these things aren't present. My gut tells me there is no other risk factor with this particular person, though, again, caveat, I'm not positive. If this is everything that it appears to be at first glance, then the answer to my question, has statin pushing gone too far? It's pretty obvious what the answer is. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.